Good evening, this is Lokazi casting for you guys. This is University of Houston CSL. This week they're facing Auburn University. And the first game will be a PvP between FLC Ska and EXO. EXO playing for University of Houston, Ska playing for Auburn University. Should have a good game here. Master League Protoss facing off, and it's on Shattered Temple, so at least it's not on Tal Dream or something silly, because that would not be fun, as that's like the foregate of ridiculousness. And the two guys are currently discussing show matches. Hmm. Should be pretty interesting. So we'll see how this game ends up developing here tonight. And they should be starting here in just a minute. I think they're just getting everything set up coordinators-wise to get ready. Very nice of them to go ahead and toss me referee, and that's so that way the spectators can chat and talk along, and then it doesn't get spammy on the uh, on the streams there. Looks like Auburn has their caster in here as well. I'm guessing that's Lynx. Yeah, Wrath. Okay. So game one starting up here between University of Houston and Auburn University. Here for tonight's CSL. Exo versus Ska. And we'll do Shadow Temple. Good map. I'm going to transition it over to the playing screen there, so it's bigger. Spent a few hours working on those at release tonight, not going to lie. Hopefully they're easier to watch, more enjoyable, hoping. So, you guys let me know in chat. Also let me know if uh, sound is too loud or anything like that. Alright, we have Ska spawning in the north middle position as the blue Protoss, and Exo spawning in the south position as the red Protoss. University of Houston in the south, Auburn University in the north. And their colors, I believe, are actually coordinating to the bar, which is awesome, so I don't have to change it. And Manor Bears saying their good luck, have fun, you too. This is cross positions, not that it matters that much in Protoss versus Protoss. Matters a little bit though, because Colossus, when it's giant Colossus Wars, can walk off this cliff and over to here very, very quickly. So it actually does matter a little bit, but not for Warp Gate play, which is what we'll likely be seeing at least for the first 10 minutes or so of the game, so let's actually check it out. Also, close by air, which other positions would be, also makes Warp Prism play a lot easier. Right now, Warp Prism play, which is extremely popular in PvP, is much more difficult due to the distance here, and you have to go all the way around the edges of the map. Not impossible or anything by, n by any means, but just much more difficult. Uh, a lot more time for the opponent to scout coming, etc, etc. It's got the Robo, it's got missing part of your army, any of these things. And we have Exo building right here next to his gas. And we have Sky building out a little bit in front of him. I've been playing a lot of PvPs actually. It seems like the entire diamond ladder is full of Protoss. I'm not exactly sure why that is. I guess because they've been bust so much lately. Uh, with immortal range and all that type of stuff. I don't know. Shield upgrades. Well, upgrades in general. Really the big buff. So that speed, scouting each other out. Exo scouts straight across. Ska scouts close by air. And Exo's gonna see nothing funky going down, everything he wants to see, expected. No type of proxy. And back at Exo's base, it's looking the exact same. Both players finishing up everything about the exact same time. Ska is just a little bit behind Exo, but not very much. Cybernetics core for Exo is just a few seconds ahead. Second pylon finishing. Probe probe. Production lists look the same. Excuse me, I had a cough there for a second. We have a little bit of probe harassment, kind of interesting, going on there. Next has built like a little tunnel between his base, 
kind of funneling it. I'm guessing that's for, I guess, four gate with a lot of zeals. I'm not really sure what that that positioning is for. It's kind of interesting. And we have warp gate being boosted out by XO right now. Second assimilator is going down for both players. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, XO took the assimilator of Ska. It's like, wait a minute. It's <laughs> kind of interesting. And Ska took his assimilator, so both players in the same position right now. Robo Bay going down for Ska, and Exo has not chosen his tech path. Don't know if he's going to be going for some type of 4-gate, or if he's going to be going for something else. And Exo's first zeal is out, and it is going to beat down that assimilator. Very, very slowly, because assimilators have a good amount of health. 900. I think extractors only have like 550, something ridiculous. The Zerg ones die really fast. And XO Robo. Okay. So both players go in the same build to get Robo. XO's poor assimilator is gonna die first. Very sad. And the Robo is getting up first too, so it is three gate robo. Whoa, four gate robo here in the north out of Ska, so this is all in play coming in here. And XO has not not dropped more gateways. Could be in a good bit of trouble here, depending on when Ska is going to be pushing out. He's just going to fall further and further behind in unit count, unless he adds more gateways. But, if he has more immortals to counter stalkers, we'll just have to see Warp Prism being built there for Ska. So, four gate Warp Prism play. Exo, in the meantime, spreading out across the map, dropping a pylon, and maybe another pylon. They're just kind of hiding over here. Ska scouting around for proxy tech. Exo getting a shot on that stalker, but not enough to damage through into its shields. This zealot, however, is going to die. One free zeal there for Exo. And we have Warp Prism being built, finished up. Warp Prism just finishing. And Exo is going to send one up the ramp, and then he's going to try and move in. Force field, but too late. Exo is already up there. And he's going to walk around and deal some damage. He's picking off the Stalkers. Ooh, good micro there out of Scott. Picking up and dropping that Stalker. Exo loses a Stalker, kills the Sentry, and now he's going to be able to run away at his leisure. And he's just getting some pot shots over there. And Warpins are not coming in across the map. In the meantime, we have a probe over there, so let's see what's going on there. Immortal is finished, and Exo is going to have to run out of the base. That um, Stalker's at 1 HP. Uh, it's going to get shot. Yeah, there it goes. It goes down. And Exo... Losing a second stalker to that very powerful immortal. Exo got a good amount of information there. He saw that there is at least three gates. I believe there's warp in of at least three zealots at a time, maybe four. So that gives him good information without even having to scout up into the base. He sees what was going on, and in response, he drops he drops it as well. His ob is up there, so he can see what's going on. But uh, Ska is actually about to finish an ob, so he's going to have to be really careful there. Exo also saw the warp prism, so by attacking you can actually gain a ton of information in these types of games in PvP without even actually moving into the back of the base. You actually got to see what was going on. More zeals being produced, one immortal out on the field, three stalkers, one of which is very low, also 1 HP. Observer does get picked off, and now Ska has the eyes on the field, and Exo is lying blind for a little bit. Exo has stalkers and a immortal position very nicely to be able to prepare for any incoming drops. And a Robo Bay going down for XO. So he's going to start in Colossus tech here in just a minute. Ob heading out across the field. Immortal currently in the Warp Prism. Therefore, Ska. Second one being rallied over. I wonder if he's going to pick it up and then go for some drop play. I'm not exactly sure what he's planning for there. Both players probably... Yep. XO always maxing out on those probes. He's at 31, which is technically oversaturation by one. But that one is moving around the map. So he's perfectly saturated. Standard EXO style. He loves those probes. There's a game where I have of him casted that I believe he rallied something like 17 probes in the simulator without realizing it. And that's just always in my head. EXO loves probes. He loves them so much he puts 17 on in the simulator without even noticing. Scott playing a little micro game over here. 
picking up and dropping that immortal a few times. And it looks like it's gonna pick up so Yeah. I'm not really sure what he's doing. Just kinda picking up and dropping things at random. Building more immortals. Looks like he's thinking about expanding maybe. Nope. He's trying to get a pile on the other side of the map and Exo is not gonna have any of that. He picks it off. So it's nice to place pylons around the map, not only to warp in, but also to see warp prisms moving around. That's why this one is placed right here, etc. This one over here. And an immortal decides, you know what? I'm going to go clear out the middle of the map, because I'm an immortal. The only thing that can catch me is a stalker. So, yeah. Colossus finished up there for Exo. So the current armies are a Colossus and two immortals versus three immortals. I think the Colossus wins that, just because it's going to clear out the zealots of the opposing protest a little bit faster, and kind of swing it in his favor. In the meantime, we should have a robo- no, Twilight Council. Very interesting. Twilight Council going on for Scott here, which probably means Blink Stalkers. But I'm not sure. He has a lot of zealots. But he's floating a lot of gas. I really am not sure what he's going for here. Pylon slowly getting worked on there by Scal. Only committing one stalker to it though. He's not exactly sure he wants to beat it up, but he's thinking about it. So he's working on that right now. More seals out in the field. And there's legs. Okay, so it's going to be Archon Zealot. I was kind of wondering what it was going to be, and now we know. Meantime, Exo has cleared his back rocks. His expansion is already finished, he just transferred over here. So his income is going to rise over Exo's here. It was down just for a moment because the probes are transferring. Now it is equal and should be overtake. There it goes. Overtakes, 900. So he is at about 20% more income currently. And that plays a good factor. He's going to be at that for at least 100 more in game seconds, which is about two minutes. So pretty much like a Colossus an income over his opposing player, which is pretty good. New assimilators have not been dropped at the expansion though. Scott picking off a pylon over here, there's little pieces crushed rolling around on the ground and disappearing back into wherever. Three Colossus out, Exo supply blocked momentarily, his army is quite a bit bigger right now. Army value wise though they're very similar. I guess Exo has more probes, yeah he has ten more probes, that's what it is. And Immortal's taking some damage, not picking off a Stalker, but almost, and then lifting off and heading back home. Observer has been following this Warp Prism around a good deal. And Zeal legs are finished. Now they are very swift little guys with axes. Well, I guess Cyber, Dagger, Sword, Shankers. I don't know what they're really called. Cestus. They're called in Diablo too. I don't remember. There's a real name for them. Archon's out on the field, so there's gonna be two Archon. So I think one's chilling at home. Yeah, that Archon apparently doesn't really want to come to the fight. Two Archon, one over here with two, three Immortals, and then lots of Zeals. And those Zeals are going to melt to these four Colossus. They're gonna disappear very fast. So interesting to see. And Exo has almost as many. He is only three down and zealots, and he has AoE damage, so I don't know. This is a rough engagement for Ska. He's behind economically, and his army looks like it's a little bit underdeveloped compared to Exos. Oh, there's that Archon. He forgot that he needed to be over here. Yeah, okay, that's the Archon. So there's now three Archons, last one merging up right now, and now it looks like it's go time. Moving in, Exo has four Colossus on that hill. Needs to engage with those Colossus, all of those zeals. Mortals being dropped right next to the Colossus. They're living for quite a long time, and Exo is not getting the coverage he needs on those zeals. And everything is dead on the top of the hill from that drop. And now these three Colossus can just sit up at the top and rain down fire. Exo coming out well ahead in this battle. But I think he could have come out a lot more ahead had he had the Colossus a little closer and focusing on the Zealots. Oh, that Archon has 10 HP. There it goes. Archon goes down. Exo is going to push across the map with his three Colossus. His army is much bigger right now. And he doesn't really have a clo 
close warp end though, so that's a little bit of a concern, but either way, he should be able to push over and crush what is being warped in right now, and behind it, he's taking a third. He's not even going to warp in, he's just going to pressure and see what's up. Very interesting play out of Exo here. Zealots being attacked by these Colossus. And Zealots actually do a lot of damage when they get up and charge a Colossus. Ooh, look at that shooting gallery. All those probes going down. Immortal at the top of the hill. This Colossus needs to be micro at Exo, pulling it back. Very nice, safe. GG called by FLC Ska. So game one goes to University of Houston. And uh, this is Okazi casting for you. I'm going to go ahead and leave the stream running tonight. Kind of a, an interesting change of pace. And then I'm going to go ahead and transition it to that other screen. Oop, there it goes. So, yeah, pretty exciting. Game 2 should be coming up here in just a minute.